Wow, isn't it good to see people in person? Okay, uh, I'm excited to have you guys all back. Um, it's an exciting time. I, I know that um, when I think back to last year, everybody had something taken away from them, and some of personal, some from a, a basketball standpoint, and that's where I'm coming from. Uh, you know, when something's taken away, and I think with chemistry and, and getting to know your team and having all the rules that we had last year, uh, it made me very intentional this summer uh, to try to make sure I got my team with the same vision, goals, team chemistry, and we worked at it. We just did not assume it. Um, we did a lot of activities, whether it was on the court, off the court, to try to build our team chemistry and our foundation. And I think that was the big lesson I learned from one year to the next. I've been doing this a long, long time. And when you can't do those things as a team, uh, it can really have an effect on what you want to be able to do on the court. So it was a very intentional foundation. We did a lot of things. We've developed a strong sisterhood that we feel is uncommon. We feel that's going to help us. Um, we've done a lot of uh, changing in our roster and our coaching staff. We have two new assistant coaches. Corey Irvin, um, if you know anything about Illinois basketball and the Irvin family, she was a highly successful coach at Whitney Young, and then she went to St. Xavier, and man, she won there too. That has had an immediate impact on our, our recruiting already, and it, those, the knowledge she has is not just from recruiting, and it does not confine to the state of Illinois. She has a perspective that is unique, that has uh, really helped us uh, draw some not only regional but national ties in recruiting. We also added Hernando Planels. He was at William Jessup as a head coach, but before that he was at Duke. Um, he, you actually can see him in some commercials. He's got that kind of uh, personality. That was a teaser you can ask him later. Um, but he was formerly from Duke, and obviously if you know women's basketball, Duke is highly successful. So he's added a really nice dimension uh, to our recruiting process and on the court. So player-wise, we've added six new players. Um, we tried to, to, to really address some things when we were looking for recruiting, whether it was our transfers or the incoming freshmen. Uh, J Jayla um, Odin is a freshman from Maryland. That's probably the quickest and longest point guard that I've had since I've been here. Uh, can really disrupt play, can get from the basket from one end to the other, and can score. And if you know things about our program, scoring is one of the things we got to do. And she's got that mentality. Another position we really wanted to address was our four player. That's Kiana Rembert. She's a 6'2 kid from North Carolina. Uh, you probably had to kick her out of the gym today because she wants to be in the gym. So she's a little upset we have this going on today so she can't shoot. That's a good thing. So we've got kids that really want to get better, and she's really addressing that, that uh, four player spot. And finally, uh, Adelia McKenzie, she's Miss uh, Minnesota, best player in Minnesota uh, committed here. She was a 53 top player. Uh, in the ESPN uh, women's rankings. All these kids can score, um, and all these kids are very offensive-minded, and we can teach defense, but we, we needed to put some point on, points on the board. Um, when we went through the transfer route, um, we wanted to get some experience. Sara Anastasieska from Duke uh, came in. She's played several places. Uh, she gives us not only kind of an edge and determination on the court, but she's helping us in our locker room, and we needed that kind of uh, edgy player, um, mature, is going to help us on the court and off, but she's really had a huge impact. We have Demila Brown, a transfer from Chipola. Chipola was in the top four in the junior college transfer, uh, excuse me, junior college uh, championship last year. She's averaged 20 points a game, um, and she was also an All-American at the JUCO level. And finally, we got Kendall Bostic from Michigan State as a transfer. We went after her hard as she came out of high school, came back to us. Again, that four spot and what we're trying to do offensively, we needed someone to stretch the four, hit, that, hit those outside shots, and rebound. And that combination with uh, Kendall and Kiana and also Sara, I think, will kind of give us that combination we're looking for what we want to do offensively. You know, we, we kind of combine that and layer that with um, – our, our returners, Jada Pe Peebles, started every game with us last year, slid her to the point guard. She has taken a really strong leadership role, wants the ball in her hands. Uh, and I think uh, Eli Alia Nye, who kind of struggled with an injury all last year, is going to come into her own. She, she's a shooter, can really hit the three ball, but her leadership. There's a battle going on at the five spot. Love it. Uh, we've got some size inside. I think we've got some depth. 
Uh, we were, you know, top 15% pace-wise last year. Okay, we, we pushed the ball. We want to score er, quick, but we weren't very efficient. And we didn't, we didn't put enough uh, points on the board to have the results that we want to have. And so that's quite frankly what we're looking to do. You know, we're trying to move the ball, get the ball a little bit more active. We think we have a good outside. We have more scoring mentality in the kids I just mentioned. You know, it was fortunate we had Jenna Smith in last couple weeks when she got to be in the Hall of Fame here, that influence of people that have won in this program um, to try to help send that message to our players. And I, and I think the thing is what we're trying to develop is an attitude of know the difference between waking, working really hard, which I think this team has always done. They've worked hard, but they've got to learn to compete every day. Winning is hard, and winning is going to be really hard in the Big Ten, and we know that. But you have to embrace winning is hard, and that's what we're trying to do. With three teams ranked in the top ten in the country, with Maryland at four, Indiana and Iowa at eight and nine, and nobody leaves. You know, everybody knows nobody leaves because of the COVID year. I'm okay with that because we've got to change. We're excited about that. But every coach you talk to right now is excited. Man, practice is great. We're looking. You know, everybody. I, I told my players today, it's not about starting this. It's about the day-to-day -day and stacking, stacking days, stacking every practice, stacking what we do. Can we get a little bit better than we did yesterday? And if we, if we kind of embrace that process, um, this, the winning will take care of itself. So with that rundown, I'll take any questions anybody might have. Yes, sir. You mentioned the, you mentioned the fact that you wanted to improve your offense. It's early in the season you know, with shooting. Have you seen that so far? Yeah, there's been a concerted effort. These kids are in the gym a lot more. You know, even what I really love with the oven construction going on and the cooperation between the men's and women's basketball program, they're finding times to get in the court because they're organized. Uh, so that's one. Uh, you know, we have abilities to track how many shots they're taking, and they're doing that. And quite frankly, we're, we're putting a half hour of our first part of our practice to just, just shooting, just making sure we're doing uh, game-style, game-type sh shots. And when we do drills right now, um, and we look over at the board and see how many points we're scoring, it's better. And that's what we got to see. I mean, you, you can do all you want, but if you don't see the scoreboard light up, that's our problem. And I think we're starting to solve that. Hey, Nancy. Um, it's two years in a row where you've had assistant turnover and some turnover on the roster with transfers out, and I know that's part of today. But what are the challenges of that as a head coach as you try to set a foundation and, and build upon it? You know, I think when assistants leave and they're going to, you know, both got associate positions. You know, you pat them on the back because if you want to hire assistants that never want to get better, then you probably shouldn't be in that position because I look for kid, people that, that want to do that. So on the, the coaching side, I, you know, it's bringing in people uh, that equally want that. So um, it's a great place to work. But what it does is you know, I think that the same thing that we were working on chemistry-wise as a team, you have to work on with your staff. Uh, and I think we got really, really lucky. Corey and Hernando, I, I, I hope you take a chance to get to meet these two because they're, they're special personalities and really addition. Uh, the second part, welcome to college basketball now. Okay, if, I mean, we all know it. Players may leave, like people, um, people can play a lot. And it's just the nature. And, you know, people say, how do I feel about it? And I said, I feel like that's what the world we're in. Accept it, move on, let's go. I think as a coach, how you play your game in the sense of you better not be so complicated every year because you're, if you want people to come in and have immediate impact, player movement, ball movement, simplicity, so that they can adapt quicker, I think is going to be a bigger question for us than, oh my gosh, you know, I think there's a lot of oh my, oh my goshes and I'm like, well, you're going to have to oh my gosh, I think for a while. That's just, just where we are in, in college basketball. Yes. Uh, hey, Coach, um, a post center, Ava, is her name Ava? Eva? Eva, um, she seems to be so, I guess, mature with everything that she does off the court and on the court. So from a leadership standpoint, what does that mean to your program to have someone who's very secure with who she is and what she represents beyond basketball? One of our goals, and I've kept it pretty tight with, we call it 94 plus two. Uh, to be an elite athlete, to be an elite team, you have to give the extra plus. Okay, if you want to run 94 feet and that's it, you're, you're going to be a 94 team. If you want to be a plus two, then you got to do things outside of that. That's where, for example, what you said, Eva, she's a plus two in the sense of like she, she's part of our community. She's part of what we want to do on campus. She's active. Um, and we appreciate that because we don't want to be a basketball team that's not connected to our community, and she does that. Yeah, Scott. Hi, Nancy. Uh, it sounds like you're almost trying to do a culture reset a little bit, if that's a fair characterization. And how, have, how has your team responded so far to what you were talking about not only working hard, but competing 
you know, naming for the win? It's culture appreciation. That's, you know, because I think we always wanted to do it, but it's just simply when you could not do it. It really put me in a place, I, I, you know, he said 30, I've been doing this for 40 years. And I've never had a year where I could not get my teams together and do the things that I want. Were we doing the right thing for the safety of our players? 100%. Would we do it again? Yes. But when it's, again, it's, when, you, when it's taken away, we just really spent time. I spent time. I reevaluated. It's just not the kids, because if it doesn't come from me, they're not going to understand that. I reevaluated where I was, where I wanted to do, um, and then we built it from there. And you'll hear things like 94 plus 2. You hear things about our sisterhood. You hear things about our values. Um, it was just more intentional, Scott. Um, and sometimes maybe that's what has to happen. Something has to happen, and it happened. And I, I do, do I want that to happen again? But I learned a lot from that. So it's, it's more an appreciation for what that means to a team. Nancy, when you have a seventh-year player who will turn 24 in January, what are her goals, and what was that conversation like to bring her into the program? If you know Sara, it was extremely fun. Um, they give her a little hard time every once in a while, uh, call her grandma, you know. Um, but uh, what's fun about it is that she embraces it. Do you know what I mean? And it's, kind of, it's a fun uh, part of her. Um, I know we were recruiting the other day and we had a younger player on campus and she was, coach, you know how much older I am than her? And I said, just hang with it, okay? She wants to be a coach. Um, that's her aspiration. So I think this is leading to, to that future. So it fits well for her. Nancy, obviously uh, this has been a tough job for people um, the last uh, you know, decade here. What have you learned in your time here about what it takes to get this right and, and, and gives you confidence moving forward? Uh, what I've learned. Um, I, I've learned, make sure when you recruit, you recruit you. you the, my, my staff knows who I want, okay? What kind of player I want. I think that's an incredible, important piece in what we're trying to look. Recruiting is huge. The thing I learned is to make sure um, that we've expanded our recruiting and understand the value of that. I, you know, I've said to somebody, I said, I didn't suddenly become a bad guy. I, I won a lot of ball games. I, and some, some, now I, I'm a bad coach. Well, I, I don't think I'm a bad coach. But I think that parts of those puzzles, it's a lot more puzzles you have to put together. And one of those puzzles is making sure your recruiting base is the type of, and, and I say, there's a lot of good kids out there, but they don't have to play for me. Is that mean you got to find the right kid that plays what your style and what you're looking for? And we're just much more pointed about that. Uh, and, and getting the people around you, the, the, the staff around you, uh, the support that Josh has given us, I mean, it keeps building. And to, to make it at this level, yeah, and I've, I've learned that. Um, and don't forget yourself. Don't forget yourself. You, you get caught up in the pressure. I mean, look at this room, okay? The pressure of, hey, you know, gotta win, gotta win. You know what we gotta do? We gotta get better. I, you know, I, I was waiting for the question of like, I can't worry, yesterday's yesterday. I, I'm gonna learn from yesterday, but tomorrow's tomorrow. I can't say anything about tomorrow, but I can get better, and if, I, if we keep just focusing in that, you know what, and that's how I used to coach. But I think that you get caught up in some other things, you gotta make sure the noise, the noise you hear is the noise you wanna hear. It's when you talk about simplifying things to maybe better suit the more transient nature of rosters. Just how do you approach that as a coach, given maybe that's not what you were doing for you know, maybe three decades? Uh, I, you're right. Uh, three decades, what happens when you're at a place for a long time that the plays actually just roll off of them because they're doing it. Now when you start something new, and now because of the nature, um, we're, we're a lot more of a four-out ball movement, player movement. Um, offense right now, which sounds simplified because everybody says positionless, but kids are learning that and kids love to learn that part of the game. Um, but the complexity of that and the repetitions of that are important. Then what you do is you, you put your offense and, and get, you know, X amount of plays that are going to take advantage of who should have the ball. So when you play a four out and just let anybody shoot, um, sometimes I'm on fire and you're not. So I should be the one getting the ball. So that's when you run your, your plays to try to get more intentional, and that's kind of the blend that we're looking for right now. Uh, you know, I think we're going to de – defensively, we're going to be a little bit different too. Uh, Coach Irvin brought in a zone defense that is, is, is tricky. I like it. So different layers like that will, will help us. Of course, we're, we're right over here, and then I think we'll have time for one more if anybody has a last question. 
Um, you talked about Jenna Smith coming back. We had a chance to talk to her a couple weeks ago. She said she still bleeds orange and blue. So for the women to see, you know, her, in, you know, in person, I know you had the presentation. What went into the presentation, I guess, of the part of like the practice court and also how important do you think it is for them to just see her in person and have a chance to talk to her? It's invaluable. Um, it's invaluable. It's invaluable to have our alumni come back, especially during those years. It's 25 years since the last Big Ten championship. We need we need contact, and we're we're working at that. Because I saw the look in the, our players' eyes and hearing some. You know, we we as coaches can say a lot, and I know they listen. But when it comes from somebody that's done it, been there, um, and she just said, "Gosh, you realize you have 24 access to a gym." I mean. The appreciation, and I think that's stuff that is authentic and organic that's really special to, to, to our program, and I was really thankful she came back. Looking at your roster, all these girls have won in high school and AAU season. Do you see this translating over on the court so far as far as like their aggressiveness to want to win and, and to become better regardless of their age and what class they're in? Well, uh, you know, I was telling a freshman today, when you go out against Maryland and you're playing someone, they are not going to care what year you are. They look at your number, they're going to go play you. And I think that's the, the component you're talking about. And that's what I'm saying. Do we work? I, I'll tell you what, our kids have always worked. They, I, I, since I've been here, we've, we've worked. It's competing. And understanding you may be able to push each other in practice and get a little testy maybe, and walk off the, pa off the practice court and say, hey, you're my sister yet. That's the uncommon bond I'm talking about. So these guys have won. Um, and like I said, I, I think the intentional team chemistry we did this summer ha creates that. Just don't put, t you put 14 people together and say, hey, you're a team, doesn't necessarily work. You got to work at it and we put the time in. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, everybody. for. Uh, I'd like to say, hey, I want to say thank you uh, for coming today. My goal is to get more of your people here at our games. I'm going to tell you that and I want to earn it, okay? Because I looked in, I met, met, there's like 30 some people in there, okay? All right? So that's my shout out. I know I got to earn it. And I also just want to shout out to the men's program um, and, and uh, Coach Underwood. Uh, this is uh, college basketball and Illinois basketball. And we support each other. We're excited for their program also, okay? Thanks very much.